Okay, so lesson two seven. Picking up where we left off yesterday. We had graphed in problem one, we had graphed absolute value. Our absolute value function is what shape? It's a V. Okay. In the first one up there, we had taken that V and moved it down, yes? In the second one, we had taken that V and moved it left. Okay. What about example problem 2A here? Where are we going to take this, Carter? We're going to translate it two left and three units up. Okay. Yes? So we've got a horizontal translation and a vertical translation here. The plus two, when it's in the absolute value with the x, left to right, opposite of the sign. So that does mean that this is going to be a left two. I didn't really, don't really have enough room to write. I wrote in left there. The plus three, because it's away from the x, outside the absolute value, is up or down with the direction of the sign. So a plus three means we're going to go up three. So first thing I'm going to write over here is the fact that this translates, my fancy algebra word, left two units and up three units. Not an XY chart person on these. So what am I going to do? Where's my vertex normally? In the middle at 0, 0. So where do we take that vertex? Left 2. Up 3. Up 3. There's my new vertex. What does a traditional absolute value V do from the vertex? Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1, yes? Put a couple of those dots. Don't just draw a V from this vertex without some side dots to help you put it in the right place. So up one over one, up one over one. Other way, up one over one, up one over one. Connect those dots, please. Arrows on the end, indicating that this V extends indefinitely. And we got it. Is that what you were guessing, whether you wrote it down or not? Okay. Now, two more questions on this problem. And that is the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Where is my vertex of my new V? Negative 2, 3, because we moved left 2, so that's negative 2. And we moved up 3, which is positive 3. So negative 2, 3. Based on the fact that my vertex is negative 2, 3, what about my axis of symmetry? X equals negative 2. My axis of symmetry is always X equals whatever that X value is. So it's not a coincidence. So X equals negative 2. Yep. My lessons are, I'll say almost always, majority of the time they are on Schoology. Um, like right now, I'm recording through the Elmo. I'll be honest, guys, if you've watched any of the recordings with the Elmo, the quality is not great because there's a lag. Okay. So if you've watched them, it's not great, but it's better than totally missing. Thanks. Aiden, you're going to put that up for me, right? Thank you. I won't be so nice next time about it. Okay. Does this mean you guys can do B with, without me? Yes. Uh, uh, Argus can. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We're graphing Y equals absolute value of X minus 2 minus 1. We need to know what translations happened here. So as you're graphing this, what are you graphing? Which ways are you going? Right? Two. Yeah, I'd say so. And down one. 
because the number that's inside the absolute value is left to right opposite the sign. The number added or subtracted at the end is up or down. So I'm going to start at zero, zero. I'm going to count over, right two, and go down one. How do I draw the rest of my V? Up one over one. There's nothing in front of my X indicating otherwise. I guess I never wrote this out, so I will here. The fact that I, what's that vocabulary word? Translated. Right. Two units. And down one unit. Okay. Um, vertex and axis of symmetry. Where's my vertex here? Two, negative one, because I went right two, down one. What does that make my axis of symmetry? X equals two. Always remember to say X equals, please. I know it's me. It sounds like me being nitpicky, but it matters. So, bless you. Okay, you guys okay with this stuff? Okay, we got the easiest part out of the way, which is the translation. You're moving stuff left, right, up, and down. Now we got to talk about some stretch and compression. What do stretches and compressions do? They're either making it taller or shorter. Now, when it makes it taller, it makes it appear skinnier. When it makes it shorter, it makes it appear wider, fatter, whatever word you want to use there, okay? This is what is the graph of y equals two-thirds times the absolute value of x. Where is my vertex going to be here? In the same place? Do I have anything telling me to move my vertex? No, because I don't have anything added or subtracted. All I have is that two-thirds. What's that two-thirds telling me? What is the official transformation? Okay. Two three. Okay. Because two-thirds is a number that is less than one, that means this is a vertical compression by a factor of two-thirds. So I'm going to write that out first. It's a vertical compression by a factor of two-thirds. We talked about the fact that the vertex has no reason to move. All we have is a vertical compression, so my vertex is going to stay. Now, to do this vertical compression, what does that two-thirds make you think? Slope. Slope? Rise over run? That's exactly how we're going to treat it. Normally, I say draw your vertex and then say count up one over one both ways, yes? The difference now, that up one over one is like a traditional slope of one, which is what is normally there. We're going to, when you do a vertical compression by a factor of two-thirds, basically change your slope from one to two-thirds. So when I do this, I'm always going to start with my right branch here, and that I'm going to do a slope of two-thirds. So I'm going to, I heard the phrase rise over run, rise two, run three, make a dot. I can make another dot, rise two, run three. Now, officially, am I going to rise two, run three on the other side of this? 
technically my slope becomes negative over there. What I basically say is to reflect this branch. Okay, you're going to, I think what I usually end up doing is I rise to run three, but I know in my brain I have to go left three. Okay, so officially when I write out the directions for this, I'm going to say, okay, we did a slope of two-thirds on the right, and now I'm going to reflect this. Like this dot was right three, so now I need the equivalent dot that is left three. Or in other words, I'm going up to left three. Up two, left three again. So it's really just using slope. I'll write out a little bit of detail, so if you look back at this later, it might make some sense to you. I'm doing a slope of two-thirds on the, what I call the right branch or right side, and then reflect on the left branch. And my phrasing that I used was rise over run. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I am off the screen. Okay. Not too bad, was it? Hopefully those of you that complained you tried to do math Excel last night and you didn't know how to do some of this stuff, hopefully this is helping. Yes? Um, we ever to like run into where it will do both um, like stretching compression and um, like moving? Mm -hmm. oh. Yep, give it time. Right. Okay. Let's practice on this next one. What's the graph of negative 2 times absolute value of x? So talk to me about what transformations we're using here. What transformations are we using? Allie? Okay, a stretch this time. Why is it a stretch? Oh, oh. oh wait, no. Wait a minute. You know, it's a compression because it has to be... Bigger than one, right? Mm -hmm. Negative two, negative no, one. No, wait, wait a minute. I think um, it's a stretch. I think I know. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's absolutely Okay, so the question to figure out right now is the deal of how do we, you know, do we call this a stretch? Do we call this a compression? What else might be happening along the way? Couple of things to think about here. What are you thinking, Ethan? Is it my reflection on the x-axis? Well? Okay. So where are we getting the reflection on the x-axis? The negative. The negative. negative. So if the negative tells me reflection on the x-axis, what does the two tell me? Now we're back to a stretch. Stretch. Okay. So, when we talk about, and I, you know, I got it. She did exactly the right, you know, she started blessing. Oh, well, but negative 2 isn't bigger than 1. When we're talking stretch and compression, you just look at the absolute value of that number. That negative is a separate entity. That negative says I'm reflecting. So, the 2 itself, I think we can all agree 2 is bigger than 1, correct? So, 2 is going to make this a stretch. The negative tells me to take this V and reflect it. Okay, so I'm going to write down some information, and then I'll take you through the graph. So in terms of what are my transformations, there is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and reflected across the x-axis. So you got that? There's a vertical stretch 
and the reflection. Treat those negative and two as two separate things. Now, to actually graph this, where is my vertex? Where's my vertex at? Zero, zero. zero, zero. Because is there anything moving me? Left, right, up, down. So I know my vertex is going to be zero, zero. There's a couple different ways you can think about this graph. And I debate which way, um, you know, a couple of, you can do it however you want, but what are you going to suggest, Carter? Negative. I think of rise over run. Okay. Rise over. If we think of rise over run. Two over one. Negative two. Over one. And I do want to think of rise over run. It is some variation of two over one, depending on how you want to think about it. One option is to do a rise of two over one, but then you have to, if you do rise of two over one, you're going to have to do that and then take those dots and reflect them down. Here's what I prefer to do all at once. So if I do a rise of negative 2 over 1, that's going to get my slope of 2 and my reflection at the same time. Does that make sense? So I'll write, I'll do it and then I'll write out the what I'm doing here. So rise negative 2 says I go down 2. Run 1 says I go right 1. Rise negative 2, run 1. And so if I do a slope of negative 2 on the right side of my V, then I can take those same dots and just reflect them across to the other side. Or basically go down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. Are we okay with what I did there? And this is where you have to be smart. Look at your final product and ask yourself, does that make sense with what transformations I claimed there were? Does it have a slope of 2? Yeah. If you count the slope of this V, it's a slope of 2. Is it upside down because I reflected it? Yes. So I did a slope of negative 2 over 1 on the right branch, and I reflect on the left branch. Got it? Okay. This section and the section on the next page is all about general form of an absolute value function, which I'm going to argue you guys already know. But officially, if we put everything together we've had, Carter was asking earlier, are we ever going to have it where we have to like stretch or compress and also move it? The time is now. Okay? You, put, you can put all these things. You can have something that moves left, it moves right, it stretches, and it reflects. And the time is now for that. We're going to put it all together. When we talk about general form of an absolute value equation, you'll see this form right here, where it's y equals a times absolute, absolute value of x minus h plus k. What's that number out front do? A number multiplying out front is going to be a stretch or compression factor, right? So the absolute value of a is stretch or compression. Now, what they specifically talk about, the vertex, gotta love it, the pointy part, is located at hk. Officially, this is located at HK, but just think logically here. What does this H tell me? This H tells me how far to move what directions? Left or right. 
The K tells me how far to move up or down. Does it make sense that H and K then turn into my vertex? Yes. That's kind of what we did up at the very top of this page. When we moved right to down one, that turned into the vertex to negative one. Okay. And then the axis of symmetry is the vertical line going through the point X equals H. Well, notice, what is H? The beginning of the vertex. Okay. So just trying to put it all together. What we're going to do with problem four here is we're not going to graph this, but we're just going to write down the information based on the equation. Excuse me, equation. So without graphing, what are the vertex, axis of symmetry, and how is the parent function transformed? So what does this three, two, and four tell you to do? The three says what? Vertical stretch by a factor of three. What else? What's that two say? Right. You're going to go right to, because it's in the absolute value, so opposite direction. And then what's the four say? Up four. Up four. So you can write that all out, yes? Yep. Now, based on that, and actually I think I'm going to go ahead and write that all out. So it is a vertical stretch by a factor of three translated right two units and up four units. We knew that all just by looking at the equation, right? Okay, once you got that written out, think about if you know the vertex. What are you thinking the vertex is, Kendra? Almost, not quite. There's a catch here, and I'm going to point it out. She said negative 2, 4. She's also close. She's making easy mis a common mistake. Abby? 2, 4. Great job. Now, okay, think about this with me, guys. Negative 2, 4. Negative 2, 4 is just grabbing the values as it appears they are, right? But think about, and I'm going to explain how this equation works. Think about which ways did we move. We moved right to and up four. When this says HK here, notice this is a minus H in the formula. So when you grab the first part, you always have to grab the opposite X. Kind of like how you move the opposite direction, you always grab the opposite X. So even though it says minus two here, you're going to grab a plus two. Notice on the K value, though, you just grab it as is. Are we okay with that? If my vertex is 2, 4, what's my axis of symmetry? X equals 2. Okay? And here's a way to think about that also. Take X minus 2 and set it equal to 0. If you take X minus 2 set it equal to 0, you're going to get X equals 2, aren't you? Okay. B, when you're ready, can you identify everything that's going on? Carter, give me one thing that's going on. I just want one. Okay, he says translate one unit right. Someone else pick another thing to tell me about this. Maddie? It reflects across the x-axis. Dayton, give me another one. 
Translate it down three units. Are we done? We need one more, right? Allie? Vertical stretch by a factor of two. You need to write all four things down. Don't tell me it's a vertical stretch or compression by a factor of negative two. Stretch and compressions have to be positive numbers. So, um, vertical stretch by a factor of two reflected across x-axis and translated right one unit and down three units. Question or ready to give me the next answer? Emergency? Need your passbook and you have to sign out there. Question or next answer? Okay. So, you know if you cross the x axis, you know, like absolute value you're getting for this Like how I knew that this is a neg this negative reflects across the x as opposed to the y? Um, well, a negative indicates reflection. Because this negative is out front of the whole equation, it reflects across the x. If the negative was in here on the x, if it had said negative x minus 1, that would be reflect across the y. Okay? Question or answer? I only want questions right now. Okay. Just trying to clarify here. Are we ready for vertex? Okay, what do you got for the vertex, Carter? Uh, agree, disagree, class. I would fully agree. Okay, one negative three. He grabbed the opposite sign there, right? Yep. Axis of symmetry. If the vertex is one negative three, Maddie? X equals one. Because it's always X equals that first number right there. Okay, we've analyzed these, we've dissected these. You ready to look at a graph now? Oh, yeah. Not right now. Oh, we have to figure out what to do. Okay. So, flip over to the back side, problem five. As we flip over and look at the back side, you need to be able to write an equation. Which basically means if we're going to write equations, we have to kind of dissect what all happened here. Where did it move? How did it stretch or compress? Did it reflect? All these little details. So, as you look at example A, don't give me an equation right now. Analyze with me. What are pieces that you see that have happened to this graph? Peyton? She says it went four up. Okay, what else? Kendra? Okay, it's reflected, yes? Okay, it's reflected across the x-axis because it's upside down. What else? Yeah, up four and reflected so far. Carter? Slope of 1, 3, I assume he means 1 third. Meaning, what is that slope then? That is a compression? 
Okay, so there's a vertical compression by a factor of one third. There's a reflection, it went up four, and what's the other piece we're missing here? It went, can you tell? Left. Left one. I know, this, that graph is hard to read, I get it. It'd be easier if the graph was easier to read, but. Now, so we have to put this all into, so if I put it all together, that means if we went left one up four, what is that vertex? wrote it down negative one four and then the slope he said he said one third one third technically if we're looking at specifically that right branch that slope is going to go down one right three yeah meaning we're going to have a negative out front here aren't we okay and you write down as little or as much as you want here but what we're trying to do is we're trying to write an equation. You remember the standard form of the equation from the previous page? Or it's at the top right there. Okay. So we're trying to fill in the equation. Y equals A times X minus H plus K. What's going to go in place of A? The negative one third, yes. The fact that it was a compression of one third and a reflection. Where are my HK coming from? H, K, come from my vertex. How far left or right you moved? How far up or down you moved? So if I write my equation, y equals a, what am I putting? Negative one third, absolute value, x, x minus negative one, plus four. Now, be smart, what do you know about minus negative one? That's really plus one. Final check. Look at your equation. Does this equation make sense with the different transformations you told me? Does it indicate there's a reflection? Does it indicate a slope of one third? Does it indicate that the graph moved left one? And does it indicate that the graph moved up four? If so, I would call it success. If something doesn't match up there, go back and adjust. That's probably one of the harder things we're doing in this lesson. I don't think it's exceptionally difficult, though. I could be wrong. Okay, B. You ready? What can you tell me here? What is my vertex? Let's just jump right there. Or if you can't tell me the vertex, how far left and right, how far up and down did we move? Uh, you went up one. Okay. Over. Are you in part B with me? I think he's saying the story. Oh, we're doing the vertex? Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, I'm connecting oh, it. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. No, I can. Okay. So, oh. slope. Yes, I can agree. He said up one over four. I can agree with that slope. Are you guys okay with that slope? Now, that up one over four, it's on the left branch. But if we put that on the right branch, that is a positive one, positive four. Yes? Okay, so I could agree with a slope of one fourth, which is my rise over run, which officially means that this is a vertical Compression. Um, what was the vertex? That's what I was really going for, but. Two negative, one. Two negative one. Which means this really went right to down one. 
Okay, do you have all the information to fill in your formula? Y equals A times X minus H plus K. Y equals, what's A? The slope. So, one fourth. Absolute value, X minus two. And absolute value, plus K, minus 1. Because, and I don't think I mentioned, that vertex is my HK. Check. Does it make sense? Yeah. My minus 2, minus 1? Yeah. That says right 2, down 1. Is that what we said earlier? Yeah. It is. Okay. Homework for this lesson is lesson 2.7, Math Excel. According to what you guys have told me, and I say this just because I can't remember, I have a Monday due date on this. Yes. Because Monday is the next time I will physically see you in class. Okay? So that is my Monday due date. Now, e-learning is tomorrow. I will physically.